Hello and welcome back to another new edition of Windows and Current Affairs. And today we embark over a very important topic, which is empowering and enforcing of youth. And of course, uh, the, uh, the, that particular process uh, is part and parcel of uh, one of the directives and targets of the uh, 2030 vision for Egypt. And it's all uh, uh, entitled inside the plan or the SDGs, 17 goals of the, SD, the SDGs of the um, uh, vision for 2030 and 20 also 63. We're going to be talking about that in detail in this uh, edition of Windows and Current Affairs, especially about digitalization and where is that going to take Egypt, especially with the economic reform program, political reform program, uh, uh, another presidential phase and uh, uh, the political life in Egypt. Where exactly is the role of youth and how are they going to operate that particular course? This is going to be our topic for uh, today and we're very delighted to be having with us uh, Engineer Mohammed Azim, board member, uh, International Association of Management of Technology. Uh, good evening, Engineer Azim. How are you doing, sir? Uh, good evening. Always a pleasure being with you. Thank you. Uh, our real pleasure. Uh, let us first uh, talk about uh, vision for 2030. Uh, probably uh, there are certain, there are different sides for this vision. We need to elaborate more over the vision of 2030 according to the directives of President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Egypt 2030, it's a holistic approach for sustainable uh, economic mm. and social development uh, for Egypt. It has so many pillars. Mm. Uh, some of the pillars are related to the economic development, to the social development, to the national security, to uh, empowerment of youth, uh, to uh, uh, leverage of uh, educational and uh, health care services uh, across mm -hmm. uh, the nation uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, each pillar and each sector within Egypt 2030 vision, you can find technology because without technology, it would be very hard to realize any objective of Egypt 2030 or the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, the 17, uh, or Africa 2063 agenda or uh, Egypt 2050 climate agenda. Uh, that's why uh, digitalization or employing the technology from a broader perspective is because coming very critical uh, for sustainability, for self-resilient uh, 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 ecosystem, for uh, building uh, an economic system and social system that cater uh, the new dynamics of the market, uh, the mm. new uh, business model that uh, we have uh, because of the technologies because the technology progression all the time is enforcing a new business model we are in front of a, a new business model every day that's why if we look at the digital transformation uh, agenda for Egypt it's is not only providing governmental services uh, online for citizens or business sectors mm. uh, it also include uh, uh, building uh, the uh, infrastructure, a robust infrastructure, exactly. uh, technological infrastructure that, uh, so you need to have uh, fiber cables, uh, you need to have data centers, you need to have high speed internet over the mobile. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why we are witnessing now the spread of the fiber uh, optics uh, network across uh, the whole nation uh, through Haya Karima initiative. We mm -hmm. can find that uh, the 4G is covered the most of the areas now in Egypt. And Egypt is building too many uh, data centers to uh, accommodate the large, uh, the large size of uh, data and records for all Egyptians. You, uh, part of this uh, digital transformation transformation is to build the digital identity for citizens and business. Mm. Uh, so you need to unify all databases all together. You need to focus on uh, building uh, electronics industry. Part of the digital transformation is to becoming self-sufficient with respect to uh, electronics as well. Uh, you need to have uh, the legal framework that understand uh, the nature of technology and the new business model enforced by the technology. Uh, that's why you are witnessing uh, a new uh, uh, a new legislative regarding uh, the personal uh, uh, the, the cyber crimes, the mm. 
the personal data protection uh, and uh, we are witnessing reform of uh, uh, regulators like uh, the NTRA or the National uh, Telecom Regulatory uh, Authority uh, to cater the new business model and to be capable uh, to uh, have more uh, services at high quality according to the international quality to the citizens to the individuals as well as to the business sector uh, you can find that uh, there is a new fund for uh, digital egypt this mm. uh, fund uh, to ensure sustainability of the digital transformation uh, projects that uh, and of course to encourage and leverage uh, the startups in this domain because startups in this domain are very promising and they would be able to uh, attract foreign direct investment by billions actually the global investment in startups and in high-tech startups uh, last year reached like 650 billion us dollars mm. so this is even in spite of uh, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, crisis or in spite of the conflict between russia and ukraine in east europe so this very promising sector that's why mm. you need to have the mechanism and the tools to attract more investment in this sector as well as it has the re-transformation or the redesign or the re-engineering of the trade sector the re-engineering of the industrial sector uh, for uh, you, you need to implement a smart transportation system it's becoming part part of the digital uh, transportation that's why we are seeing the monorail uh, uh, new project or uh, the smart transportation system w combining the subway or the underground with the light trains and with the monorail and you can find also uh, the smart cities is part of uh, uh, the uh, digital transformation because cities are aging like humans it has a life cycle exactly like humans so you cannot depend on age cities that's why you need to build fourth generation cities like uh, the new administrative capital like the new alamein the new mansoor and so on and so forth and these cities are totally uh, equipped with the high standard or the, the state whole of the network art. of uh, digital system definitely because you need mm -hmm. to uh, operate the utilities you need to uh, uh, operate uh, the trans uh, the transportation across the city you need to have a sort of uh, predictive plans uh, for uh, tackling challenges was coming to utilities uh, uh, maintenance uh, mm -hmm. you would be able to um, implement a smart transportation system that in the future you would be uh, uh, capable to have uh, autonomous cars even or driverless uh, uh, cars uh, running in the new administrative capital for example because it's equipped with the fiber uh, optics network with the 5g uh, eventually with the 5g networks uh, which, which is a very high speed network uh, you would be able also uh, to uh, modernize your uh, supply chain uh, ecosystem so mm -hmm. uh, because uh, without having uh, up-to-date supply chain uh, this is would be uh, a problem and we uh, this one of the lessons learned from uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic mm -hmm. because we had to have uh, uh, a resilient uh, supply chain ecosystem so technology would play a role that's why Egypt is investing in modernizing its supply chain uh, uh, networks and ecosystem by embedding more uh, technologies in it it includes also a reform of education uh, uh, building digital leaders who can even comprehend and understand the importance of technology and would be able to utilize technology to the maximum uh, impact uh, and also mitigate uh, risk associated with technology because technology always has two sides not only the positive si side but it also has uh, another side that we need uh, to have uh, this in mind and we need to take this into consideration and this is by having digital leaders who can understand the notion of uh, utilization of technology and how to use this kind of technologies uh, into different domain uh, and uh, uh, within the economic and social uh, sectors right uh, saying so um, might need uh, a plan it might need uh, steps and uh, it might need a vision after all uh, how can we create balance between uh, somebody who have a, who is equipped already like the new generations with the uh, technological background 
and the all the elderly gen generations or the older generations who have the experience and um, i mean it's uh, we cannot deny their importance in the scene at the same time but uh, lay a foundation with both sides i mean how can we start doing this we need to reskill or upskill uh, people all the time mm. Uh, as I said, technology is always imposing new business models. Mm. So if I'm not capable to deal with this new business model with new technologies, I think I would be in a serious situation. That's why mm. all the time... Even if I have the experience. If I have the experience, because mm. uh, the experience could not always uh, the right thing to do uh, with the new model. Uh, because uh, if you are talking about uh, the model of shared economy, mm. uh, like the transportation through mobile uh, apps, for example, mm. uh, this I need to understand this uh, kind of uh, new economy mm. and uh, to deal with it. Uh, uh, and governmental services in general. This is, uh, of course, because that's why we have now Digital Egypt platform mm. and we have the app for this and we have the call center even to provide the services for uh, our citizens who are not totally equipped with the uh, digital skills. So digital skills becoming or having a digital skills is not becoming an option today. Uh, also, we need to look into the future uh, because technology w in the future will be more disruptive. And of course, this disruption will come with disruptive business models as well. For example, uh, in the future, we'll have what's called the decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, this based on what's called smart contracts that could be uh, triggered automatically if certain circumstances are, are met. Uh, that's why we need to forecast mm. or even foresee the, uh, the technological trends and keep this in mind while building or uh, uh, articulating our strategies because if I have something today, uh, tomorrow definitely I would have different things. Mm. Uh, and if I'm providing the service, uh, even from the private sector, not only from the government, this also applies for the private sector. If the uh, private sector needs to be always competitive and resilient and agile and uh, can have the ability to absorb shocks, massive shocks like uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, impact or mm. the, the, the problems or the economic uh, problems leading uh, to Ukraine uh, 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 crisis, mm. uh, thus it would be almost impossible to be able to be agile and to be resilient without having technology, mm. without connecting both virtual worlds with the uh, digital world. And this is only can be done through employing advanced technologies like the artificial intelligence, uh, like the, the next gen uh, communication systems, like uh, employing uh, artificial intelligence, uh, employing uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, big data sciences. So uh, this is, is becoming uh, the, uh, the core of every economic and social sector. And, uh, the only way to have sustainable uh, resilience will be, be, resilience becoming is very fundamental aspect, especially after COVID, w without having technology in place, without employing technology to the max, w and I would to be keeping abreast of what's happening next. I need to have an eye on the future, not only on the technological uh, progression that are taking place now, because the pace is beyond the imagination, actually it's beyond our imagination, even uh, as uh, uh, expertise in this domain, mm -hmm. uh, it's progressing uh, at very high pace, it's disrupting all business models, so we'll have to deal with such technologies and decide when to invest in it and decide when to embed or implement such technologies within our uh, business practices uh, from the government sector or from even from the private sector as well. Mm. So w my question to you is where do we find ourselves now in that particular domain? I mean, uh, are we applying that? Are we going on the right course uh, with the correct pace? You talked about the pace and the speed. 
because every day there is something new and um, we have to keep up with that pace. So where do we find our, ourselves in our own assessment, honestly? Uh, do we have to spend uh, effort in another direction or how is it going to work when we're trying to set ourselves on that particular map of uh, digitalization, especially with governance? Uh, definitely we need uh, to always mm -hmm. to have a pace that is equivalent to the international pace because as I said, technology could make you out of business tomorrow if you are missing this wave of new technology. That's why we are witnessing now, uh, uh, we have now so many uh, research-based universities uh, all over the, the country. Mm -hmm. And we need to link such research-based universities with industries. The link between academia and industry is very critical because industry will always have challenges. And the only way to solve this challenge is mm -hmm. by having a sort of research and development within the university mm. in a form of applied research, not only the basic research. Applied mm. research that's serving uh, the goals and objectives of Continuous. the industry. This non-stop operation. Mm. Mm. The, so we, it's not now, it's not tomorrow. Uh, it's always actually. Uh, so I need to exert efforts today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And we need always to allocate funds for R&D. Uh, the beauty here all over the world, uh, the R&D funds are not coming from government. Uh, this is not uh, the, the right, uh, this is not the case actually. 70% of the R&D efforts and funds are coming from the private sector all over the world. In the United States and even in, in, in China, in Korea, in uh, uh, Taiwan, in uh, Japan, in Germany, in any industrial nation, you can find 70% of the R&D or research and development efforts are coming from the private sector, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, very uh, challenging because if we need to have uh, a real competitive private sector, the private sector itself should invest in R&D, not waiting from government support to invest in R&D. Mm -hmm. Government here is to avail uh, labs, for example, to, uh, to be part of, uh, of the R&D R &D projects. Uh, to facilitate uh, uh, some funds, initial funds for R&D uh, projects. However, the private sector is always responsible for three quarter of the uh, efforts in, uh, that taking place in this uh, domain. Mm. So continuous efforts in R&D, continuous innovation in, in this regards, continuous progression in this regards. No, this not becoming an option in 21st century. Uh, if you look at any developed economy or even developing economies that are excelling in, uh, in this century. Uh, for example, the Chinese economy. Uh, you can find a, a telecom company, the number of their patents, filed patents a year, is more th than the number of the filed patents in a country like uh, United Kingdom, for example. So this is... How is that? Uh, because it's, uh, they are investing. Mm. A, a single company can produce more knowledge, more innovation, more than a whole country. So this is becoming by investment in, mm. uh, in this kind of uh, technological innovation and employing the technological innovation within the product and services to have a superior position and to have a competitive uh, position because competitiveness is the name of uh, the game actually uh, on the uh, macro level, on uh, the micro level, uh, even f on the individual level. So every one of us, uh, every industry, every government need to be competitive and the only way to be competitive is to maximize the utilization of technology. Of course, what would make the difference is owning the technology itself and this is could be done by the youth, back to the youth, actually. Uh, we, youth and experts. At the same youth time. and experts. Of oh. course, you need gray hair with the youth mm. as well. Mm. Uh, and we are, we are doing a lot of mentorship to activities, mm. to startups here in Egypt, and we are helping them uh, to see things that they are missing because they're, uh, most of the time they are focusing on the technical part, not the business part. So we are trying to uh, compensate such uh, uh, issue for them and give them the real life experience, the market experience, and let them do what they do best, which is developing technology. And we've seen many startups are attracting 
a good number of, uh, uh, of investors to Egypt in what's called the venture capitals or the, uh, this is a, a special kind of investment firms that are interested only on high tech uh, domain. And Egypt last year made like 1 billion US dollar investment in start Egyptian startups. They, mm. they were, Egypt were able to attract a 1 billion US dollar investment in this small companies that are uh, founded by a small group of uh, youngsters and but they have a real value and they have and it was successful proven of successful. course because uh, in this kind of investment uh, they do a lot of uh, due diligence to to select uh, such a small company to invest because it's a small company it's very uh, vulnerable it's a very fragile company that's why if i'm putting uh, 200 50 million US dollar in a company in this size, mm -hmm. I need to be sure that they are capable, they have the good team, uh, they are serving underserved market, and their potential for growth is the sky. Yeah, right. Fin finance is very important, but also the uh, training and the, um, I mean, uh, the awareness when it comes to the technological part is very important and the proof on that is that most of the uh, technological projects and the uh, very powerful popular apps that uh, boomed worldwide came out of nowhere by two um, uh, friends or uh, by some youth who did not possess uh, that particular sum of money or, and they just started uh, from scratch and they grew by time. So uh, do we expect that you could find or wake up one day and find some successful projects like that here in the uh, Arab region or in Egypt? Uh, definitely, because th this was happening now, actually. We've seen very good examples. Uh, we've seen Egyptian companies are startups companies are mm. listed in uh, Nasdaq and, and listed in London stock. Uh, so it's happening because this an ecosystem is developing all the time and is becoming I mean are we creating the, the community and the environment for definitely those definitely people? definitely we have a lot of incubators we have mm -hmm. a lot of accelerators that are taking care of startups and they are uh, the incubators and accelerators are a innovation hub that equipped with the latest uh, technologies to help them to uh, do their research and test their uh, uh, products or services are there and are expanding all over uh, the country mm -hmm. we yeah. have now an ecosystem system that is far better if you compare it like 10 years ago for example mm -hmm. uh, and we have it's uh, coping with the momentum uh, definitely because this is the only way this is uh, the vehicle of creating a disruptive technology is by the startups mm -hmm. that's why the startups are very appealing uh, to the this kind of investment we are talking about here 650 billion us dollar a year the average for uh, 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 act the actually the average investment per month all over uh, the world is like 50 to 57 billion uh, US dollar a month in such startups because they are representing the future because they mm -hmm. are working in emerging technologies that most of the big companies are not working in. Uh, for example, uh, the bioengineering, uh, uh, one of the vaccine was, uh, of COVID was uh, made mm -hmm. by uh, a startup and mm. uh, a joint venture was a large uh, uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh, uh, actually, they are doing a lot of great uh, uh, innovation um, in the area of uh, artificial intelligence and applied artificial intelligence that actually touching every single aspect in our life today. Uh, they are doing great job in the area of the next generation of the internet or what's called Web3. Uh, they are doing a lot of uh, innovation in the domain of uh, connecting uh, or applying uh, what's called uh, having a sort of internet of things or connecting uh, building application for connecting uh, devices all together mm. uh, for serving uh, uh, an economic sector such as the agriculture sector or uh, the industrial sector or the medical or the healthcare sector so we have uh, a, a lot of uh, youngster operating in this uh, domains however we need more we need to refine their ideas we need to refine their product and service we need to make them more 
uh, appealing on the radar of the large companies because one of the exit strategies is to be acquired by a large company and this mm -hmm. very successful uh, uh, acquisition or exit method for uh, uh, for startups is to be acquired by a large company if you are as a startup touching the core business of a huge company and simply they come and acquire and even they make you responsible for uh, the continuous development of your technology but within the large company so it's very dynamic uh, ecosystem actually and what's uh, the beauty here is this kind of technologies uh, are totally dependent on brains and as young sir here in egypt and we've seen a lot of technology geeks all over uh, the country even in uh, in uh, universities uh, outside cairo where mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, egypt uh, entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurship summit was held in Dumyatta, in new Dumyatta, and we've seen uh, a great uh, young uh, men and, and women uh, doing great things and presenting their ideas and their products and services in a very confident way. Uh, of course, this needs more development, but however, now we can find uh, youngsters from Upper Egypt, from Delta, from Cairo, from Alexandria that are bringing to the market new ideas, uh, new innovation that are totally dependent on uh, superior technologies. And this is representing the future by all means, and this will have a great impact on the overall uh, economic and social performance uh, of uh, uh, Egypt uh, now and in the future. Mm. Uh, so uh, m most of the technological successes come from uh, outside Cairo, I mean from other governments. Let's look, take Port Said as an example. The government started off with Port Said and then continued all the way down to the Mieta and 14 different governorates are um, uh, already under uh, the government's uh, uh, plan to be able to digitalize uh, these governors. But at the same time, there must be some training centers like the uh, National Training Academy, like uh, other governmental institutions who are were made and dedicated, uh, focusing over uh, creating uh, new calibers and uh, empowering those youth and encouraging their abilities. Uh, talk to us about this. We have here in Egypt uh, two programs. One of them is uh, for uh, the youth from 12 to 17. Mm. This is a new initiative to teach them uh, the technologies in the very sophisticated domain like the artificial intelligence, uh, the digital arts, uh, uh, the augmented reality, the virtual reality, and so on and so forth. And they are teaching the, uh, the youth as well, uh, digital, not only digital skills, but also the personal skills. So mm. they are uh, uh, trained them or how to create a small venture, how to, what's the concept of entrepreneurship, uh, how to manage a small team, uh, how to present your idea and pitch your idea in 45 seconds, uh, how to uh, have a sort of critical thinking, how to have a sort of emotional intelligence and so on and so forth. Mm. And the second uh, initiative for fresh grads and graduates they are doing the same thing but on a larger scale uh, and the third one is for anyone who can go and log in using the national id and take courses in digital marketing in uh, user experience uh, interfaces in um, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, programming languages the blockchain mm. It's, it's Ministry there. of Telecommunication? Yes, a Ministry mm. of uh, Communication and Information Technology are mm. availing such platforms and mm. all such platforms are free of charge. Mm. So uh, now it's... Very encouraging. And mm. also you have the uh, Egyptian Knowledge Bank. You can log in and read mm. about the latest technology and uh, search for the latest researches in any single aspect related to technology. Uh, in the medical field, in the uh, high-tech field, in the agriculture field, and whatever. Uh, you can find the latest researches available there. So the choice always is ours. Mm. Uh, because now uh, the source of information is unlimited. And it's now the government of Egypt are availing such high-quality training 
and high quality content from the most prestigious institution all over the world and free of charge. You, all what you need is to join them online and to be committed and dedicated to have the course and to rescale yourself or upscale yourself. Mm. This is very most important. importantly, it's free of charge. Definitely. It, it needs to be promoted for because n n it is not that particular, I mean, uh, acquired the awareness about those uh, initiatives um, uh, is not really uh, taking place the way it's supposed to be. But at the same time, uh, looking over other institutions like education, for example, like other ministries, um, I mean, uh, in the curricula, uh, don't you think there should be some uh, amendment with the curricula uh, of education at early stages, foundation stages, to be able to prepare, lay a foundation for, uh, like President Abdel Sisi have focused many times on many occasions on building the Egyptian character. Building the Egyptian character doesn't depend only on uh, random initiatives or uh, free of charge uh, courses or things like that. But it should come with uh, a planning or it should come with uh, education. It should come with the media. It should come with the, uh, uh, awareness campaigns and I mean uh, other uh, uh, plans and uh, ways uh, to be able to implement that Egyptian character at its best. Definitely. How do you, see, how do you assess that? Uh, uh, definitely because uh, actually uh, we need to have uh, uh, information, we need mm. to have uh, knowledge uh, and this could be done through uh, the, the platforms for example. Mm. And uh, of course you need to have extracurricular activities. Exactly. that promotes the concept of innovation and entrepreneurship. We need also to have extra clicker activity that promotes how to learn new technologies because what you are taking now in during the official curriculum, it will be obsolete tomorrow because due to the pace of the technological It has to be renovated. I mean, in other words, I was trying to say that there should be other platforms open uh, for uh, this particular vision, 2030? Uh, actually, uh, we, we, there is uh, another initiative by uh, Ministry of Planning called Drawad 2013, or mm. Leaders of 2013, or Innovators of 2013. They are providing such uh, support as well. Mm. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a, a sort of holistic approach. There is it's because that's not innovation and technological innovation is not the responsibility of one entity. It's the responsibility of the exactly. whole community. Exactly. Uh, from the school, from home. Actually, actually we, we need to tell parents that they should, if they have uh, uh, a kid or um, a young man or a young lady, the who is capable to innovate, uh, please help them to innovate, mm. help them to read, help them to uh, widen their scope, uh, help them to keep uh, uh, their knowledge up to the standards of the international peers, uh, help them uh, to keep abreast of what's happening around the world, mm. uh, keep them uh, and send them to uh, camps, to the, what's called boot camps for innovation, to, to, to learn how to think, to learn how to develop an idea, how to bring a small idea into a product or a service. This is always there. So we need to encourage also parents. We need to encourage. Exactly. You made it clear. You said that you need to encourage people and uh, urge them to encourage their kids. There are millions of kids in other governorates who are really very talented and they are full of ideas. Only their parents, they don't know where to go or uh, where exactly to be able to uh, work hard on those talents in order to uh, promote for it or uh, progress with it. This is the problem. Yeah. And I think there should be uh, some uh, how uh, to be able to direct uh, those parents where to go. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think this is the role of uh, the whole society again. Mm. Uh, this is the role of the, edu of the education institution, uh, rather, mm. uh, either they are schools or universities. This is the role of the NGOs. Uh, this is the role of everyone. Uh, because actually we need to spread this kind of culture. Uh, mm. The culture of innovation. The culture of 
problem solving the culture of uh, developing solution rather than creating problems uh, the the culture of uh, uh, using the technology to uh, help us to have a better life uh, to uh, to prosper uh, the community uh, to build the small and medium enterprises that are capable to create more jobs and mm. uh, and to be connected with the larger enterprises to have uh, uh, economic and social impact so this is the responsibility of everyone uh, the responsibility of the government the responsibility of the uh, non-governmental organization and non-state actors the responsibility of schools the responsibility of universities the responsibility of parents as well mm -hmm. uh, so we need as community to uh, come all together uh, to help our new generations to excel uh, to, to develop their skills to uh, to have a sort of upskilling uh, what they have now to help them to understand uh, the dynamics of the new marks the dynamics of technology the impact of technology and its disruptive uh, business models because definitely will come up with great startups uh, out of this kind of activities and this mm. Uh, great startups will be a leading startups and will be becoming leading international companies one day. Uh, this is how it works in the United States and this is how it works in China, this is how it works uh, in, uh, in Europe in many occasions. So we need to have a different mindset, an open mindset that innovation is always there and you are innovative by nature and you need to capitalize on new things you mm. need not going for stereotyping you need mm. to create solutions for challenges that you are facing and create solutions that of a benefit to your society and to your economy and definitely this will have a great impact on you on the personal level and definitely you will be a and successful venture and definitely you will make wealth as well individually of course wealth is mostly important but at the same time there is there need to be an urge to uh, draw the attention of uh, people and citizens to the importance of technology and modernization and digitalization in particular and how important is it to take us to a whole new level, a whole new future, if we really need to progress. Uh, this, totally is, this could be the bottom line uh, of it. Uh, of course, on that note, uh, Engineer Mohammed Azem, I uh, would like to thank you so much. You are a board member of International Association Management of Technology. Thank you so much for coming. Always pleasure and honor. Uh, our real pleasure. And I guess that that would bring us to the end of this edition of Windows and Current Affairs. Many thanks to all of you and to see you again next week. That's it. Bye.